which is Indiana State and Utah, kind of a regional home away from home, Indiana State and Terre Haute about 90 minutes away from Indianapolis. Uh, they take on the Utah Utes tonight in this NIT semifinal. Indiana State a three-and-a-half-point favorite. Both teams won on their home floor in the quarterfinal round to get here. Total 163. Jeff Nadu began the discussion from a handicapping standpoint. What stands out here for Indiana State and the Utes? Well, look, obviously the big elephant in the room is this is going to be an essential home game for, for Indiana State. I mean, this is not a far trip from Terre Haute, uh, Indiana. Uh, you got to figure this is going to be a great atmosphere. They may have had one of the better atmospheres the other night when they played, uh, who was it, whoever the last opponent was. That was impressive. I mean, the fans were all over it. It was great. And, look, we know what they're going to do, elite three in, de- uh, three in uh, rim offense. That said, Utah, really good rim defense, very big, very hawking. This is the first time Utah's been away from essentially the West Coast in a long time. I mean, you got to go all the way back to what – Probably you know around December first, the last time they traveled past Mississippi. Uh, so this is definitely a little bit different. But this offense is is good as well. Great from three. If both teams are hitting their shots tonight in Hinkle, this could be a high scoring game, right? And that obviously lends to the total being one sixty three. I was hoping we were going to get the total in the one fifties here. I get the feeling this could be a back and forth game, maybe similar to the game we saw against Drake uh, in the MVC title game, just kind of a back and forth game. A lot of athleticism on the court here. I definitely give the edge to, to Indiana State being at home, uh, at home per se, not necessarily, but it's a right. tough one. I think the number's right. Like I said, I would have hoped to have the total maybe in you know 158-ish range. 163 is a bit high. They did a good job, I think, with this game. Lean Indiana State, lean over. It was an 85-81 win over Cincinnati. Jeff brings up the point that the Sycamores played all three games on their home floor. Now they make their way to Indianapolis here against a Utah team, Matt Cox, that comes into this game. Uh, as he mentioned, they haven't done a lot of travel outside of the either the mountain or the uh, Pacific time zone. They did beat VCU at home. Again, they won all three of their games at home. Did not have any travel, Utah. Uh, they beat uh, UC Irvine and Iowa before they beat Virginia Commonwealth. All right, Matt Cox, thoughts on this first NIT semifinal tonight? Yeah, you mentioned the uh, home road splits. I mean, this year Utah is three and eight against the spread away from home. They're uh, with an average cover margin of negative eight points. So they've really not been that competitive outside of their uh, their home building with the altitude advantage that a lot of those mountain schools have. And now you got to go on the road to again different time zone against a team that's going to be super hard to prepare for. At least that Craig Smith, you know, they, they've had enough time to get acclimated with all the complexity and the nuance of Indiana State's offense, which is you know by my account the most. Uh, the toughest preparation in terms of all the sets they run, um, just the uniqueness of it, save maybe UConn, who's obviously going running rough shot to the NCAA tournament. But it's just a tall order for Utah. Um, I mean, the number is definitely, it feels high, just, you know, pound for pound. You have a really good tournament caliber Utah team um, against a Valley team who was awesome this year. It feels like it should be closer to a pick. But if you give home, you know, it's full four, even five plus points, um, you can certainly justify why the number is what it is. I, I, I'm tempted to lay it here at Indiana State. I'm surprised to see this number hovering still around three and a half. I, I also see the number, the total kind of come down a little bit. It'll open 165 down to 163, 163 and a half. Um, you know, I think maybe a higher stakes type of game, it could slow down as we've seen some of these NCAA tournament games slow down. Um, so I think that's probably what the market sees there, but nothing profound here on side or total just from that angle and also remember you're very uh, contingent on threes right these teams are very contingent both on the three ball in point distribution throw in Utah did play very well uh, against uh, BYU they actually beat BYU who's very similar offensively to uh, Indiana State so uh, this is a fascinating game again I think they did a great job with these numbers I think if anything's a bit high you know maybe the total but you know again if threes are going in this could be you know 89-85. What kind of night will Cream Abdul-Jabbar have? Robbie Avila's (laughs) new nickname with the goggles and the tattoos and the whole bit. Jeff, you bring up a great point. I just looked. You want to know when the last time Utah played outside of the mountain or the Pacific time zone, if this is correct, and I think it is, November 19th, they lost the consolation game in the Charleston Classic to St. John's. 
Since then, every game, either in the Mountain Time Zone or the Pacific Time Zone, with the teams they played out of conference or obviously in the Pac-12, the Pac-12 tournament, and for Utah, all three NIT games at home in we- Salt Lake. Uh, that's a great point that you make. Now, what do they look like when, in, when Indiana State clearly is going to have three or 4,000 fans or more in the building, maybe more than that in Hinkle Fieldhouse? I'll tell you one what. Yep. One thing that, that Matt mentioned at the early part of the show is, is Josh Schertz could be on the move to St. Louis. I, I will say this. I mean, this Indiana State team could very well run everything back. I mean, they bring back pretty much everybody if everybody stays. There's no seniors on this team that play a ton of minutes, really. Um that could be interesting if, if he goes to St. Louis, how many people go with him? Could he stay and this team maybe runs it back, maybe unfinished business? Mm-hmm. Um, they, they very well could be back probably in this picture next yep. year, so we'll see. And, and I kind of think that's why, Jeff, they've played so well so deep in the year. You can see a lot of these NIT teams you know, splinter perhaps when they know the writing's on the wall and yeah. you know, coach is going somewhere and the other players, either they're out of eligibility or they're probably not going to follow them. But I think this is all the guys that are on this team, I believe, have at least one year of eligibility. So you could easily see them just following him to SLU. Um, well, they'll probably be in line for some bigger NIL opportunity, um, just a bigger stage, right? Slight step up in conference going I from thought, NBC um, to A-10, so... I thought overall, I mean, I guess obviously it, it, it comes down to him, him making more money, but it does does seem like a bit of a – like what, it doesn't really seem like a higher-end job, does it? I, well, I, I, the slew, the, the slew job actually it's underratedly strong. They, they, they're they going to pay a, a pretty penny for this. Sure. I, I think to the average person outside the Valley I – mean, I'm in the Midwest, so I think I know this more than most. But it, slew is actually a very lucrative job. It's just been kind of tarnished by – some mediocrity lately, but they will definitely pay more. And I think the kids sure. there have big opportunities to make a lot more money. Um, so we'll see if that comes to fruition. And the A-10 does have more visibility, as you're talking about. And St. Louis, obviously, uh, had though? Rick Majerus previously, had Lorenzo I know, I'm, I'm with Jeff previously. on there, though. I do think the conference differential is actually is is almost neck and neck at this point. Um, yeah, the A-10, I think, is trying to keep you know a, a step above some of those, you know, Valley and other you know strong in majors. But... Um, Conference to conference, it's actually much. I'm with Jeff on that one. It's very competitive. 